How did a game that when it initially came out was one of the most cozy, cutesy, non-toxic, casual games available on the internet swiftly turn into one of the most competitive, toxic, and aggressive games on the market? It's the story of how League of Legends went from this. Oh, I found a pony! Pony, 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 what? pony, 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 <laughs> look at the pony! Did you see the pony, Steven? No, I didn't see the pony. But I stand in the pony, there's the pony, look in the pony, pony, pony. No, oh, what, what? To this. Spam your kid, <laughs> boy! Holy <laughs> shit, are you 90? Spam your kid <laughs> every time it's off CD, spam it! <laughs> This is the story of how League of Legends went pro. Double lift walking right into the bushy. Will face check this and he could be going down. He is absolutely going down. Wow. The first hill to Amazing. come out before a minute of the game and Fnatic starts this one off. Wow. Letting Epic, uh, Epic Gaming know that they are ready to play in this one. And Flashback. It's October 2009. And as a Dota player, I've signed on to a little indie game called League of Legends, and I'm playing in its beta. I'm running around as Nasus, stacking hearts of gold, which for those of you that remember, were items that gave you gold per minute. I would stack every single slot full of them, max out my items in about 10 to 15 minutes, and then run around and queue the entire enemy team dead. As someone that's played Dota a bit and is not a very good Dota player, this was a power fantasy for me because the people that were suddenly playing League of Legends weren't very good at the time, and the game was a broken mess. But an incredibly fun broken mess. The sort of broken mess that caused a lot of people to send emails to their friends saying, hey, sign up for this beta. This game is a little bit weird and quirky, but it's incredibly fun. At this point, you have to remember that the identity of League of Legends was defined against its predecessor, Dota. And I do not mean the smooth Dota that's on stream now. I mean the old school Dota, the Dota you played on Garena. And that Dota was not a smooth experience. Do you speak Filipino? You probably don't. So you're probably gonna get banned from a lot of games, kicked from a lot of games. The micro is hard. Understanding macro and last hitting on that engine with that ping on Garena servers was terrible. It was a rough game to play, a fun game to play, but a game that you would be banned by so many people just for trying to learn. If you think modern day League of Legends is tough to get into, playing Dota on Garena back in the day was a completely different universe. So League's identity was defined by being acceptable, easy to use. You could just download an EXE and click play and oh my God, you'd be playing a MOBA. Nowadays, that sounds so obvious, but in the day, back in the day, that was revolutionary. You don't have to download any Filipino software. You don't have to have a copy of Warcraft 3 on the correct patch so that you can play with the people that are playing this version of this map. Oh no, you need to download the new version of Defense of the Ancients. None of that. It was easy. It was accessible and it was broken as hell. But looking back, it's clear that the boys at Riot Games never thought that League of Legends was just going to be the casual, cutesy, more easy to access version of Defense of the Ancients. They wanted more. And by 2011, they had made that clear. From the very beginning with League of Legends, we set out to create a very fun and balanced experience that would appeal to a mass audience. We want to continue to evolve the experience to help establish it as one of the top esports titles in the world. And the very first competitive League of Legends tournament that I can find, or that I remember, was DreamHack 2011 in Jönköping, Sweden. Swedes, please don't make I've spent a long time trying to learn your language. I'm doing my best. SK Gaming would take home the $10,000 US prize. And I remember hanging out with my buddies on Team Liquid and I can't remember, what do we use before Discord, Ventrilo, and making fun of League of Legends being considered a pro game because we had Brood War and StarCraft II and Counter-Strike 1.6 and we were cool. And how was this little cartoony game ever going to be successful as an eSport? What are they gonna do next, Riot Games? <laughs> Make a cartoon version of Counter-Strike? <laughs> <sighs> okay. Doctor. Nurse. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No. And 
as an esport, it was laughable. For those of you that weren't playing the game back then, you could more or less buy endless wards at that point as a support, which I did. I got to my highest rank, which was gold one, and I'm not a good League of Legends player by any standards, largely just playing support and buying 100 wards, placing them around the entire map, and then we would win. win. That was it. The game was broken. It was not meant to be a competitive game, but it would soon begin to start transitioning into such. The first League of Legends world might not have been a resounding success compared to the heights of StarCraft II at that time or even Counter-Strike, but the seeds were planted. There were people that cared, and Riot were watching and beginning to transform the game. I won't bore you in this video with the history of the balance changes during the past years of League of Legends, because I would go insane if I made that video, and I would never make a YouTube video again. Also, I don't think you care. But what I don't think anyone doubts after that first Worlds back in 2011 is that League of Legends began being balanced in a different way. The differences would be minimal over the next few years, but by the time they were bought by Tencent in 2015, things were radically changing. Champions were more complex, damage would be higher, and then lower metas would change rapidly, and overall the game would become more competitive day by day by day. The game wouldn't be balanced by player feedback anymore, with balancers like Freak admitting that win rates are balanced purely by the mathematics of a character, and that's it. This was no longer a casual game where player experience mattered. This was a competitive game where the metrics were all that mattered in balancing the game, and victory was all that should matter to the person playing it. In the space of about five to six years, League of Legends had gone from the silly little cutesy Teemo hat-wearing brother of its big daddy Dota to being possibly the most competitive game on the planet, and this has not changed. As we move into the late 2020s, things have gotten even more competitive. Coaches earning hundreds of thousands of dollars just so people can get good enough to play with their friends without being publicly humiliated, something that would be bizarre even by Dota standards or Counter-Strike. Content creators like Rav escaping to playing hardcore World of Warcraft, hoping that he won't die so that he doesn't have to go back to playing the constant competitive grind that is Dota and being stuck in gold for, how long has he been stuck in gold? I don't know, like a decade. League of Legends story is so unique because it's such an interesting example of when developers decide to kill fun to pursue esports. Was it good for League of Legends in the end? I don't really know. Had League of Legends stayed the cutesy game that it was, easily accessible and had never been bought out by Tencent? I don't know. Could we have had a casual League of Legends but also had the explosion of other media surrounding the game like the amazing series on Netflix? I'm not sure. League of Legends has attracted a lot of players, particularly people that are way younger than me, because of the promise of esports. But at the same time, I think League of Legends killed the fun.